Welcome back outsiders. I'm here in beautiful Zor Valley for the final part of my land navigation series. In this video, we're going to go over the parts of a compass. We're also going to learn the basic skills of map and compass work, like shooting a bearing in the field, orienting our map, and taking a bearing from a map and using it in the field. Why do we use compasses in the first place? Well, it's pretty simple. It's to walk a straight line. We shoot an azimuth or bearing, we walk towards that object, and we know that we're walking in a straight line. And then once we reach that object, we're gonna get on the other side of it, shoot another azimuth or bearing, and walk to another distant object. It keeps us walking in a straight line. As humans, we have what's called lateral drift. It's a normal thing. You always tend to walk towards your dominant side. So I'm right-handed, so my lateral drift, I'll normally walk a little bit to the right. It's normal and a compass helps us avoid that. In previous videos, we've gone over all of the parts of the map. Things like UTM lines, scale, declination, distances, and now we're gonna take all of those skills that we learned in those videos and use them in practical purposes with a map and compass in the field. There's three major map and compass skills. The first is orienting your map. The second, is shooting an azimuth or bearing from the field and transferring it to a map. And the final skill is taking an azimuth or bearing on a map and shooting it in the field. Before we dig into map and compass skills, I'd like to thank the good folks at Dig the Falls. They're an organization that catalogs all of the publicly accessible waterfalls in New York State, maps them, they do a bunch of waterfall challenges and a ton of conservation work. They're going to use some of my videos on their website. So thanks guys. Appreciate it. So let's take a look at the basic parts of the compass. This is a base plate compass. This is the Sunto M3. This is my go-to compass. And the base plate is this whole outside part. And if you look on the base plate, it has a bunch of different things written on it. The first thing you'll notice is there's a centimeter ruler on one side inches on the other, and then there's some other rulers based on the scale of your map. You'll see that there's a magnifying glass. If your map is very small and you can't read something. This red arrow at the top is what's called your direction of travel arrow. Then we take a look at this spinning part. This is called the bezel. And at the top of the bezel, we have what's called the index line. And that's the, what we use to actually read the azimuth or bearing in degrees off of the bezel. Then inside of the bezel, we have a couple different things to look at. The first is the red orienting arrow. You'll hear me refer to this as put red in the shed or the dog in the doghouse. This is what I'm referring to. Then there's these vertical lines, which are called the orienting lines, and that's what we're gonna line up on our map and our UTM grid. And finally, and probably most important, is the needle. This is our magnetic needle. The red side corresponds to north, black to south. So you're gonna put the red side in the red orienting arrows. And finally, because my compass has an adjustable declination, which I highly, highly recommend, you'll see uh, the declination on the inside of the bezel. We're gonna adjust that as our first step. So before we even use a map and compass together, the first thing we need to do is adjust our declination on our compass. And we do that by looking at our map. And this map I printed out from Caltapo has a declination of negative 11 degrees. Remember that we are on the east coast here. Therefore, our declination is gonna be negative or a western declination. Because my compass has a declination adjustment, what I do is I take the key that's on the lanyard and I use the little screw on the back of the compass and I adjust that declination until I have 11 degrees west. Remember that we are on negative 11 is a westerly declination. And once I have that, I am all set for all of my bearings that I'm gonna take for today.
So to orient a map, it's pretty simple. What you want to do is you want to set your compass to north. So you're putting the north line, zero degrees or 360, on the index line. The next step is to take your map and you're going to place your compass on one of the UTM lines or the edge of the map. And then, as I said before, we're going to put red in the shed. So we're going to rotate our body or the map. And now my map is oriented north. So I know what I'm looking at in front of me is in front of me on the map if I know where I'm on the map. So the next skill is to shoot an azimuth or bearing. And let's just say a friend said, from Point Peter, if you shoot a azimuth of 156 degrees, you'll see the Valentine Pyramid. So what we're gonna do is take our compass and we're gonna rotate our bezel until our index line shows 156 degrees. Next, we're gonna hold the compass out a little bit away from us to avoid uh, any contact with metal that we might have on our body. And then we're going to rotate our body until we put red in the shed. So now that red is in the shed, I know that because the direction of travel arrow is pointing this direction, I know that the Valentine Pyramid is out in this direction and I can see it off in the distance. So that's how you shoot an azimuth or bearing if you know what it is. Next, we're going to shoot an azimuth or bearing of some object in the field. And behind me, I can see this big cliff face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point my direction of travel arrow at that cliff face. And then I'm going to rotate that bezel until I put red in the shed. And then I will just read the number that's on my index line. So that is reading 118 degrees. So those are the two basic skills. Either you're going to know what the degrees are and rotate your bezel to those degrees and shoot that azimuth by putting red in the shed and following the direction of travel arrow, or you're going to use the direction of travel arrow to point at some distant object and then you rotate your bezel to put red in the shed. So now how do we come up with those bearings or azimuth? So the first skill is taking a bearing and azimuth on a map and then shooting it in the field. So I know I am at Point Peter right now. And let's say I wanna know where the Valentine Pyramid is. So the first thing you're gonna do is set your compass, base plate ruler, pointing in the direction that you wanna travel or look. So make sure that your direction of travel arrow is pointing at the object or the direction you wanna go. And then this lines up from point to point. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate your bezel until your orienting lines, the red lines inside the bezel, line up with the UTM grid lines on the map. Once you've done that, you can look at the index line, and I see it's about 156 degrees from where we are. So now I can use that 156 degrees to shoot a bearing to the distant object. So now what I'm gonna do is hold my compass out in front of me, and I'm gonna rotate it until I put red in the shed and my direction of travel arrow should be pointing at the distant object, the Valentine Pyramid. So one important thing to note, whenever you're taking a bearing from a map to the field or the field to the map, you're only gonna rotate your bezel one time. One time while it's on the map, you rotate your bezel and then you're gonna pick it up and put red in the shed or vice versa, you're gonna shoot that bearing in the field, rotate your bezel, and then you're gonna place it on your map. Only rotate your bezel once. So we've taken a bearing from a map to the field. Now let's take a bearing from the field to the map. So I see a distant object. I see the confluence and what's called Martin's Point out in this direction. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna shoot that bearing. So I'm gonna point, take my base plane and point the direction of travel arrow at the object. And then I'm gonna rotate my bezel until I have red in the shed. So I'm rotating it and I see it's about 100 and, 
144 degrees in that direction. Now I'm gonna take my map and I'm gonna transfer that bearing to the map. Okay, so now I've rotated that bezel in the field and I'm only gonna do that once and it read about 144 degrees. So now I know I'm at Point Peter, so I need to determine where I was looking for that Martin's Point. And what you do is you place that base plate on your map on the point that you want. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate your compass on that point until your orienting lines are parallel with your UTM lines on the map. So I am just about parallel right there. And I notice that if I draw a line using this ruler, it's gonna draw a line to Martin's point. Those are the basic skills of map and compass. Orienting a map, taking a bearing from the field and transferring it to the map, and then taking a bearing from a map and transferring it to the field. Now I'm gonna go over a couple more advanced map and compass skills, finding yourself on a straight line and triangulation. So we're gonna head over to another part of Zor Valley. So I follow the trail that emerged at the creek bed, and I don't know where I am exactly on the creek. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look around, take a look at my map, and see if I can determine, based on the topography around me, if anything matches up and I can find a point that I can shoot a bearing or azimuth to, to do a straight line to where I am. First thing I'm gonna do is orient my map. Remember, we orient the map by putting the north line on our index, place the base plate edge along a UTM grid line, and then put red in the shed. So as I do this, I'm rotating, I got red in the shed. So I'm pretty confident that uh, I have my map oriented the right way. Now, as I stand here, I'm looking at the features in front of me and I can tell that right in front of me right there is Point Peter. So now that I know one topographic feature that I'm pretty confident based on the map, I'm gonna shoot a bearing to that. Okay, remember to shoot a bearing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna point towards that object with our direction of travel arrow and then we're gonna rotate our bezel until red is in the shed. We're gonna take a look at this index line and read 342 degrees. So that point is 342 degrees from where I'm standing right now. I know I'm on the creek, so let's now transfer that to the map. Okay, notice I only rotated that bezel once. I'm gonna keep it right where it is. And I don't know, I'm somewhere along this creek right here somewhere. And based on that straight line, I'm gonna to try to figure out exactly where I am. So I had 142 degrees to point Peter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this compass on this map someplace at point Peter is gonna be my, my anchor point. And then I'm gonna rotate my compass until my orienting lines are parallel with my UTM lines. So right about there. So if I were to draw a straight line we can do it this way too, so we can see kind of where we are because we know we're on the water. So if we draw a straight line right here, I can be pretty confident that I'm just about right here on the water. Learning where you are on a straight line can be a pretty handy skill if you know you are on a particular trail or you have a feature like a river or a creek behind you that you, you know it's a straight line or a pretty defined feature on your map but I'm gonna show you a better way using triangulation. So we've made it to an unknown point here in Zor Valley. If you look around and see where we are, this is probably one of my favorite spots. If you've watched some of my other videos, you can probably guess where I am at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to triangulate my position. This is a much more accurate way of finding your position rather than on a straight line. Same skills, you just have to do it three times. So I'm gonna look around at different features. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is orient my map, put my north line on my index line, place my compass base plate edge on a UTM line, 
and then I'm gonna put red in the shed. Okay, so, all right, my map is oriented, so I kinda can see, because we got the creek below us, how this goes. And, uh, you know, I'm looking out in the distance right here, and I see the Martin's Point, the main branch going that way, the south branch going that way. So I'm gonna use that rock face right there as one of my points. And then I'm looking out in front of me here, and I can see this um, V, which indicates it's a stream that's flowing into the creek and going uphill. So I can tell right in front of me is that creek. And then I need one more point and I can just see around this bend, the end of the cliff face um, across. So I'm gonna use those as my three points for triangulating my position right here. Okay, step number one is to shoot a bearing to my first point, which is Martin's point right here, this rock face in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put my direction of travel arrow pointing at the topographic feature, and then I'm gonna rotate my bezel until I put red in the shed. Okay. And then I'm gonna take and record the number that is on the index and we have 124 degrees so now i'm going to transfer that 124 degrees to my map we're going to place our base plate compass we're not going to rotate our bezel we already shot that bearing at 124 degrees we have martin's point here and what we're going to do is we're going to place the straight edge of the compass on martin's point and then we're going to rotate the compass and remember you want to have north going north, not south, or else you're going to be 180 degrees off. So we're going to rotate the compass until those orienting lines are lined up with our UTM lines. And then we're going to take and draw a straight line on the compass. We don't know exactly where we are, so we're just going to take and draw a straight line right there. That I have my first straight line from that point to my map. I'm going to repeat that two more times with the other known features that I have here. So step one is I'm gonna point my direction of travel arrow at that creek, and then I'm gonna rotate my bezel until I have red in the shed, and then I'm gonna read my bearing, which is 56 degrees. Now I'm gonna take my map and point at that creek edge, place my edge of my compass on that creek edge, and then rotate until I have my orienting arrows lined up with my UTM grid and my north is pointing to north. I'm going to take and draw a straight line right there. Now we're going to do that one more time around the bend here. I'm going to shoot this bearing. Direction of travel is pointing at that edge. I'm going to put red right in the shed. And I'm going to take a look at this bearing. I'm going to take and not rotate my bezel and I'm going to finally place this on that, that edge where that point is coming off and then I'm going to rotate my compass until my orienting arrows are in line with my UTM grid and then I'm going to draw a straight line. And if I take a look at the map, my three straight lines will form a triangle and I'm somewhere within that triangle. So if I did this right, I should be on Valentine Pyramid. So those are the basic skills of a compass. We learn how to orient our map. We learn how to take a bearing from the field and transfer it to a map. And then we learn how to take a bearing on a map and transfer it to the field. And we also learn a couple advanced skills, finding where we are in a straight line and triangulation. I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to click that like button if you want to see other how-tos, other adventures, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That's it for now. I'll see you guys outside.